Yes, guys, once again, this is Assorted Challenge TV, and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Toenail. It's basically, it's a small Stelvio. This is just the concept for now, but yeah, the production version will probably look quite similar, and it's very pretty, isn't it? It's got pretty toenails. Toenail. Toenail. I'll, I'll give up. Chinese firm Arcfox. Yeah, you probably haven't heard of them, and neither had I until today. Are showing three concept cars here at Geneva. They're all electric. The most important one is this SUV, which has a range apparently of about 600 kilometers. Then there's the GT, which is a sports car, and has a range of about 400 kilometers, but can do 0 to 60 in about 2.6 seconds. There's actually a racing version of it over there in blue. Now, you won't be able to buy that, but these other two will go into production, obviously, first of all, in China, probably in the next couple of years. Aston Martin has literally gone new car crazy here at Geneva. So there's this mid-engine supercar concept, which is set to take on the lights of the Ferrari 488. There's a small version of the Valkyrie with a V6 engine. There's a running Valkyrie as well. And then in the background, there's a Lagonda SUV. I mean, it's just total madness and totally awesome as well. It's all about waffle here on the Audi stand, so perfect for me. Actually, it's all about electricity. In particular, this car, the new Q4 e-tron. So it's only a concept for now, but if you look inside, you can tell it's pretty much production ready. And the production car will go on sale in 2020, priced from around 55,000 pounds. But what is it? Well, in terms of size, it fits between a Q3 and a Q5, but it's all electric. You have an electric motor at the front, one on the back, so it is four wheel drive. And combined, you get enough power to get from 0 to 60 in just over six seconds. Top speed is only 112 miles an hour, but the range is pretty decent, 280 miles apparently. This lightly camouflage car is the e-tron Sportback, so it's basically a coupe-ish version of the e-tron. You can see with its slightly slopey rear end, so it's a bit less practical, but looks cooler. However, look, it does have some fake vents, as I'll illustrate now with a new car wow waffle of truth. Now that leads nowhere, and I've got sugar all over the car. Finally then, Audi is showing off a bunch of plug-in hybrids. In fact, there's more than you can shake a waffle on a sticker. We've got an A8 over there, an A6, there's a Q5, and this rather lovely A7 Sportback, which is finished in this striking car wire blue paint. That's its unofficial name. Although they should probably adopt it. Show some respect. Okay, I've been told to clean up my mess, so. Yeah, that's better. Have you ever wondered what a Russian Rolls Royce would look like? Well, there you go. It's called the Aris Senate. It also looks a little bit like a Bentley from some angles as well. They've just taken both designs and squished them together and got this. Now underneath the bonnet, it's got a 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 hybrid engine with 600 horsepower. It's also four wheel drive. Inside, it's rather luxurious as well. It's also drawing quite a crowd, maybe because it's a copycat of Rolls or a Bentley. But it's, it's interesting anyway. And look at the size of that grill, it's massive. Bentley is celebrating its 100th anniversary here at the Geneva Motor Show, and it's given itself a little present, this. The number nine edition. So it's a limited edition car, only 100 will be made. And there's no mechanical changes over the normal Continental GT, but there's loads of styling upgrades, and they've been inspired by this. Old blower Bentley from the 1920s. The paint scheme has kind of inspired the new car, but obviously they didn't have metallic paint back in the day. The other car Bentley is showing here on its stand is this, the Bentayga Speed. So if a normal Bentayga W12 isn't quick enough for you, this should do the job. Its six litre W12 twin turbocharged engine has 635 horsepower, and that's good for 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds, but that isn't the killer stat. No, don't you worry, it's fine. These things happen at a motor show. It does, it happens all the time, you know. There'll be more of that later, people walking in front, so you just have to get on with it. Anyway, the main talking point about this car is the top speed, 190 miles an hour, and that makes this the fastest SUV in the world. Yeah, channeling my inner clock, son. The BMW stand is all about plug-in hybrids, so this is a plug-in hybrid version of the X5, this is a plug-in hybrid version of the 3 Series, that over there is a plug-in hybrid version of the 7 Series, and over there is a plug-in hybrid version of the X3. So yeah, I think you get the idea. You'll be able to get a plug-in hybrid version of pretty much every car in the BMW range. Here we have the Bugatti La Voiture Noire. It's a one-off and it costs 12 million pounds. It's basically a sheer on underneath the skin. It's just that it's got an all new skin. Now, if you can't afford a full-size Bugatti, then have it one of these. 
uh, toy version. It's even got carbon fiber on it. Mind you, it's still not exactly cheap. That thing will set you back 11,000 pounds. Now to see how much you can save on a toy car, click on, actually don't know. <laughs> we don't do the toy cars, but if you want to see how much you can save on a normal car, you can click on the pop-out button in the top right corner of the screen or on the link below the video to make sure you're paying a fair price. Citroen has very loud music on its Geneva show stand. It also has this, the Ami One concept car. So basically it's an electric car, which is supposedly the spiritual successor to the 2CV. The idea is that it's just meant for driving round town. It has a top speed of 30 miles an hour and a range of about 60 miles. Also, it's dead short, so you should be able to park it nose in at the curb. Man, that music really is loud. I'm just trying to do a job here and they're not letting me. Finally, we come to not to say it, but to Cupra. Yes, it's not to say it at all. It's a new Cupra for Mentor. This is a concept, once again, it's going to go into production 2020, largely unchanged. This is a plug-in hybrid, though. So you've got a 1.4 litre petrol engine. You've also got an electric motor combined, you've got around 240 horsepower. Now on an electric power alone, this thing will do about 50 kilometers, but most of the time you can be driving along on a combination of that gasoline power plant and the electric motor. Here's some stuff. It's, it's electric stuff. Ego, I'm going. I'm here at the Ferrari stand in Geneva, and once again, I'm not actually allowed on it. Maybe if I lean, I can, I can reach the new car. It's called the F8 Tributo. It's basically an update to the 488, so it's a bit lighter. It's got some new aero. It's got some chassis tweaks. Uprated engine, of course. In fact, it's the most powerful V8 supercar Ferrari has ever done. It's got 710 horsepower, which is quite a lot. If only, if only I could get closer to it. Maybe one day they'll let me understand. I don't know what it is with Ferrari. I mean, then let anyone look that guy over there. He doesn't look any more important than me. At least I've got my own cameraman rather than having to get someone to hold my mobile phone and take a picture of me. Maybe we should start a campaign, people. Get Matt on the Ferrari stand. For me, the coolest car here at the Geneva Motor Show is this, the Fiat Centoventi. I hope I said that right, might not have done. So, what is it? Well, it's effectively gonna turn into, oh, look at this, this guy's just bumping me out of the way. Sorry, my friend, well, he likes it as well. Anyway, so, this car is gonna spawn the next Panda, and it's all electric. Now, what's interesting about it is that normally it has a range of around 60 miles, which you might think isn't really enough at all. But let's say you want to go for a longer distance, you can go to your Fiat dealer, that slides some more batteries into it, and then you've got a range of up to 300 miles, so it's useful for longer journeys. Also, when the car goes on sale, it'd be fully customizable, so you can make it look as cool as you want and spend as much as you want. You know, a little bit like you can with the 500. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the production version of this. The future's exciting. Ginetta normally does race cars, but now they've done a road-going supercar. Look, there it is. It's called the Akula. It doesn't look cool at all, though, does it? In fact, it's quite ugly. Sorry, Ginetta. Just is, though. The big news here on the Honda stand is the e-prototype. Now, it follows on from the Urban EV concept. It has changed slightly. So that car was dead square. This one's a bit more rounded. Also, the concept had three doors. This is a five-door, so it's more practical. It's not quite as cool looking, but it is still pretty. Pretty cute, isn't it? It's a great little city car, actually. It'll go on sale in 2020, priced from around £25,000. It's got a range of 120 miles from a charge. You'll be able to charge it to 80% full in about 30 minutes, which isn't too bad. Jeeps are all about rugged, off-road performance, especially in trailhawk formats, such as this Renegade behind me. However, it's also eco-friendly because it's a plug-in hybrid. So it has a 1.3-litre petrol engine at the front, an electric motor at the back. That gives you four-wheel drive and emissions of just 50 grams per kilometre can even run on electric power alone for up to 50 kilometres. There's a Compass version as well over there. That's not all there is on the Jeep stand though. There's some S models which are sportier versions of its entire range. So Compass, Renegade, Cherokee, Grand Cherokee, they're all available in Estrum as well now, in case you wondered. Kia has only gone and unveiled the new Soul. And what's more, it's electric power only. So you're going to be able to get two versions. One with 210 horsepower, which has a range of 280 miles. Another with 140 horsepower, with a range of 170 miles. You pay your money, it takes your choice. It actually looks quite cool. Also, you'll be able to charge it from 20% full to 80% full in about 45 minutes, regardless of which model you go for.
Now I have no idea what the heck's going on over here, but there's some kind of like photo for people next to this concept car, which is called the Kia Imagine. I don't know what I'm imagining. But anyway, it's an electric four-door coupe with a performance slant, apparently. Check this out then, the Koenigsegg Yesco, 23 million pounds, very rare car. It's got a five litre twin turbo V8 with 1500 horsepower and it's capable apparently of 300 miles an hour. However, some bad news, it will be the last petrol only car Koenigsegg ever makes. Lamborghini is showing two convertible cars here at Geneva. So the first is this, the Aventador SVJ Roadster. So it's pretty much the same as the coupe, but without a roof. And they've gone and painted it in this wild matte gold paint, which I must say, and I'm embarrassed to say actually, I quite like. Now in terms of the engine, you've got a 6.5 litre V12 with 770 horsepower. Nord 60 takes just 2.9 seconds. And being the SVJ, you've also got four wheel steering, you've got lightened alloy wheels and some special active aero. Now, if you're interested in this car, um, yeah, very few people will actually get to own one. Part of the reason for that is that it costs £330,000, but then what do you expect for a roadster that can do 217 miles an hour? The second car is the Huracan Evo Spider. I'm not entirely sure why Lamborghini call the Aventador Roadster and the Huracan Spider, but there we go. What you need to know about this car is that obviously it's like the Evo Coupe, so you have an uprated chassis over the normal Huracan. It also has people walking across it in frame like that. It's a motor show, these things happen. So 5.2 litre V10 with 640 horsepower, 0 to 60 takes just 3.1 seconds. It also is available with rear wheel steering for added cooling prowess, and it's got some extra aero on it, though it's not active aero like on the Aventador. Price-wise, well, this thing will cost you £220,000 and it has a top speed of 201 miles an hour. Now, here's the question for you. Would you like to spend the extra £110,000 for the SVJ Aventador Roadster for an extra 16 miles an hour? Would you? Click on the pop-out button in the top right-hand corner of the screen to let me know what you think. See, it just happens all the time. you just got to get on with it. Me, personally, I think I'd save the cash and just get this. And it does look good in green. Mazda has an all new model. Look, here it is. It's called the CX-30 and it sits between the CX-3 and the CX-5 in the range. Looks pretty smart as well, doesn't it? And it's quite nice inside, I've checked it out. Plush materials, I like Mazda interiors actually. So this car is an SUV. You'll be able to get it with front wheel drive or all wheel drive. It gets Mazda's latest range of Sky Active X engines. It's also got mild hybrid technology to boost its economy. The Mercedes stand is replete with new models. So I'll point them out to you. Over there is an EQV, it's an electric MPV van. Over there is the CLA shooting brake. So it's a CLA, which is basically an A-class with a kind of slopey estate rear end. Over there is the new facelift GLC. Over there is the AMG GLE 53. So mild performance AMG version of the GLE. Beyond that is an AMG GTR Roadster. Why cut the roof off? I don't know. And beyond that, it's not new but it's just kind of cool, an orange G63. Actually, there's something else I want to show you. And here it is, look, before they just cover the car up, check this out. These are insane alloy wheels, absolute madness, new here today. You won't be able to get them in the UK, and good job too, because with the kind of cubs we have in England, you're going to make a mess of them, and they look very expensive. In fact, I can actually see my face in them. Oh God, I'm looking tired. <laughs> Mitsubishi is showing off the Engelbert Humperdinck here at Geneva. Actually, it's called the Engelbert Tourer. It's only concept, but it's an SUV, plug-in hybrid, with an electric-only range of up to 43 miles, apparently, and the technology in this car may eventually filter down into the Outlander PHEV. Also, this thing is a seven-seater, it's got four-wheel drive, and it's supposedly very high quality inside. Just like the Outlander, not. Nissan is showing off a hybrid SUV here in Geneva. It's called the IMQ, and it's not your normal plug-in hybrid or a normal series hybrid. It actually has a 1.5 litre petrol engine, which provides power to the batteries, which then power two motors. So it's driven by electricity, although the energy comes from fossil fuel. Seems like madness, but actually that powertrain is gonna go into production cars very, very soon. One thing that's good about it is that you get loads of torque. So this thing actually has 700 newton meters of torque, which is more than an Nissan GTR has. No, I haven't stepped back in time. This is a brand new Pagani Zonda. 
built especially for this motor show. It actually celebrates 20 years of the Zonda and it has the same engine as the original, so a six litre Mercedes V12 with 450 horsepower. Still looks stunning today. This here is the PAL-V and it's a flying car. It's not just a made up concept, it really does fly. If you buy one of these, you will fly in it so long as you have a pilot's license. Look, it's even got proper dials and stuff. It's insane, a real flying car. Let's get back down to earth with some normal cars. The big news from Peugeot is this, the new 208 small car. I think it looks fabulous. It's a really smart looking little thing, isn't it? I'm not gonna tell you about it because what you can do is just click up there on the pop out banner in the top right corner of the screen or on the link below the video to watch my in-depth top 10 video about it. So just do that. But there's something else I wanna show you. Now, this is super exciting. Now, I like the 508 as it is, but this is a Peugeot Sport engineered one and it has some extra styling bits, makes it look a little bit more racy, but that's not what matters with this car. It's the fact that up front, you have a 1.6 litre turbocharged petrol engine mated to an electric motor, and there's another electric motor at the back, and combined you have 400 horsepower, a 0 to 60 in just over four seconds. It's a plug-in hybrid, so you can actually travel up to 30 miles on electric power alone. I hope they make it, and I'm sure they will. I'm just chilling out with the new Piek Mark Zero. So yeah, getting in everyone's shot, just sat on my stool. I should probably tell you about this car. So, it's all electric. It's a two-seater coupe. It has a range of about 300 miles. It's got 400 horsepower, not 16, 3.2 seconds. But the most exciting thing about it is the fact that you can charge it from empty to 80% full in just five minutes. I mean, that is life-changing for an electric car. Should also point out that the guy behind this is the former VW chairman, Ferdinand Piek. Also, he's the nephew of Ferdinand Porsche. So he knows a thing or two about building cars. <laughs> Did you know that the most powerful car ever to come out of Italy isn't a Ferrari nor a Lamborghini? It's this, the Pininfarina Battista. So it's got 1,900 horsepower and it makes that from four electric motors. On a single charge, it can do 280 miles. And if you want one, it'll cost you two million pounds, it's quite a lot of money, but it can do Nord 60 in just two seconds. And you know, I mentioned Ferrari at the beginning. Well, don't you think that from the side, it looks a little bit like a Ferrari 488? Let me know in the comments box below. Polestar has done something kind of odd with their Geneva show stand. So it's a big sign there and a big stand area here, but no cars to be seen anywhere. For some reason, they've hidden them behind this wall. Well, here we go. This is where the Polestar 2s are hiding. We've got a white one here, and over here there's a grey one. Although it's surrounded by people at the moment. Quite like it in grey. It's a bit less iPhone-y, but still, yeah. You know about this car, don't you? So it's got a 400 horsepower electric motor. It's got a range of like 300 miles. It's basically Polestar's, which is, it's Volvo in it, really. It's Polestar's Tesla Model 3. So, yeah, they're going to sell quite a lot of these, I think. This is a new Porsche 911 Cabriolet. That's pretty much all I have to say about that because it's, it's rather self-explanatory, isn't it? It's a drop-top 911. Actually, there is something that you should know. Porsche is one of the few car manufacturers that actually makes its own folding fabric roofs in-house. Apparently, they're better if they do them themselves, so they say. Here we have the new Renault Clio. Look at it, it's a smart looking small car. I don't need to tell you too much about it. You know what a Renault Clio is. This is just the latest version. I do like it in this matte gray paint. The other thing that's quite impressive about it is the interior quality. So cars of this size usually feel pretty cheap and they have brittle plastics on the dash and on the door tops. But this one, no, softy, softy, touchy up there and up here, all very nice. Well done, Renault. Another car Renault has on its stand here in Geneva is this, a Lecoq Sportif version of the Twingo. The least said about that, better I think. Welcome to the Seat stand. Behind me is the new Seat Elborn. Now Elborn is a very trendy suburb of Barcelona and this is a very trendy car. It's actually a concept for now, but it will spawn a production car which will actually be virtually unchanged. And you'll be able to see that in 2020. So it's an electric car with an electric motor at the back. It's got about 200 horsepower and it should have a range of around 400 kilometers, so that's about 300 miles on a single charge. Next we have the Minimo, and I know what you're thinking. That looks a little bit like a Renault Twizy, but it's not, it's Seat's own car, it's completely different, honestly, that's what they tell me. Now they do say it's got better range, better performance than a Twizy. It is just a concept for now, 
but they might put it into production if enough people are interested in buying it. See, here's a Renault Twizy. It's almost identical. This is the Skoda Kamiq, and it's basically Skoda's answer to the Volkswagen T-Roc. Only I've had a look inside, and it feels more expensive. The materials are plusher. It's got a soft touch dash. The T-Roc doesn't. Yet this will be less expensive, of course, being a Skoda. This is a Skoda IV concept. So it's an electric car. It's got two motors, one at the front, one at the back. Combined, has about 300 horsepower. Should be capable of 0 to 60 in just under six seconds and should have a range in the real world, rather than the fake world, of about 300 miles. Now, I would like to get closer to it, but if you see those models up there, they were actually at the Paris Motor Show and I bothered them a little bit too much and there's now a restraining order and I could get into trouble if I so much as step onto this stand, so I'm just have to leave it there, I'm afraid. Sanyang is showing off its new Corando here in Geneva. Yeah, I know it's covered, but it looks a lot like the old Corando. Corando, yeah. Subaru has set up a really big stand here at Geneva to show off its Visive Adrenaline concept. Yeah, it kind of suggests that they may one day do a plug-in hybrid or full EV crossover thingy. I'm so excited. Here on the Suzuki stand, there is absolutely nothing new. I just wanted to come here to cuddle a chimney. Was that too weird? It's too weird, isn't it? Tata, which owns Land Rover, is showing off this little SUV. It's called the H2X, and it's clearly a concept. And that's really all the information I have on it, sorry. There are a few things you need to know about on the Toyota stand. So there's no massive world debut, but there are some new cars, such as this GR Sport version of the Toyota Corolla. Basically, it's got a sporty body kit and a little bit tweaked suspension. Nothing changed to the engine or hybrid system. Then over there, you've got like a four-wheel drive, rough track version of the Corolla, so a bit jacked up and some body cladding. Then there's some different good Agos and a slightly facelifted Prius, but it still looks kind of hideous. I like this, though. This is cool. I like the Corolla, and I wouldn't mind a sportier version of it. Nice. Volkswagen has three new cars here at Geneva. One is a concept, two are production cars. So the concept is this ID buggy, so it's an electric powered buggy. The motor's at the back, it's got about 200 horsepower, and actually the underpinnings of this car goes into its electric vehicles, the road going versions. It's just having a bit of fun really with this. You know, you know like they did with a Beetle, that you could take the Beetle chassis and then do various things with it, such as a beach buggy. That's what they're doing here really. Over there, is the T-Roc R. So it's basically a Golf R in a T-Roc body. So two litre turbocharged engine with 300 horsepower. Should be pretty quick. Now here is the final car. It's the other production one and it's the new Passat. Well, I say new, it's been facelifted. Slightly different design, some rated engines and the latest VW Group driving aids.